So a scatter plot is a graph used to determine whether there is a relationship between paired data. On page 38, it tells you this definition and you'll see that a relationship between paired data is also known as a correlation. Now we can figure out what kind of correlation scatter plots have, right? Now if y increases as x increases, it's going to have a positive correlation. As y decreases and x increases, it's a negative correlation. But then there is the part where, you know what? It has no relationship whatsoever, meaning there is no correlation, or it's also known as a random correlation. More often than not, you'll see a lot of these scatter plots just described as no correlation. So let's take a look at A. What kind of correlation does what kind of correlation does graph A have? Well, if you look at it, if I drew a line this way to slightly describe it, it's actually going from left to right down, meaning it is a negative correlation. And then if I look at the other one, I mean, I guess I could draw a line up, but does that really cover this, this? No, not really, right? Meaning, this correlation, there is no correlation. So what we want you to do for letter C and D is actually plot the information and figure out what kind of correlation there is. So you can label your X and Y axis. You can count by ones on the X axis. And actually, since it only goes up to 10, you can see that you can count by ones on the Y axis as well. And then as you go to plot the information, you can cross it off on the data so then you know this way. You've actually already covered that ordered pair. Now for those of you that are confused, like, wait, where are you getting this ordered pair from? Well, take a look at, oops, take a look at this one. This is three comma five. The X is three, the Y is five. So I go to three comma five and I plot it right there. So if you want to go ahead and write down the ordered pairs underneath, you can absolutely do that. But you don't have to if you don't want to. You can go straight away and plot them. Okay, so taking a look at this, what kind of correlation does it have? It's a positive correlation. All right, try the next one. Now, if I take a look at my x's, well, I can count by ones. But what I notice is that since this graph only goes up to 10, if I count by ones, I can't do that for the y's. So for the y's, I'm actually going to count by twos. This is going to help me plot it, everything. So now this one, it's one comma three. Well, I have one. Oops, you yeah, know, I lose the page sometimes. That happens. There we go. Okay, so. This is one comma three. One, but if I notice there's no three, so I'm gonna have to go right in between this two and four. Now keep plotting the rest of them. Now some of you are kind of like, well, why can't I just look at the table and say, well, it's this kind of correlation because uh, numbers are increasing with the X as Y increases. That is true, you can take a look at the data. The tricky part is making sure that it's not a random or a no correlation. This one, you, as you can see, as we continue to plot this, we see that it's going to be a positive correlation. So just be careful when you're plotting these. All right, let's take a look at packet page 39. So now a line of fit. It is a line used to represent the trend in data showing a positive or negative correlation, aka line of best fit. So even when we have a scatter plot and the information's all over the place, we could actually still create a line and find an equation for it because we can try and see if we could best describe the data. So the first step is always to make a scatter plot. You'll always be given the 
data, and if you're not, you're putting the data together. So you create a scatter plot. Label your X and Y, and then we need to decide whether the data can be modeled by a line. Remember, if it's no correlation, then it cannot be dis it cannot be modeled by a line, meaning you cannot find a line of best fit. Then it cannot be modeled by a line, right? It's not possible. So just make sure you have that no or, you know, have it in the back of your mind because the whole point is that it's showing whether it's a positive or negative correlation. Third step is to draw a line that appears to fit, right? Quote unquote, loosely fit fit the data as close as possible. There should be as approximately as many points above the line as below it. Now, this might not always be true, but again, it says approximately. So you want to try your best to get as many points above the line as below. Then you're going to write an equation using two points on the line. Remember, when you have two points, you can find the slope. Then you can put it into PSF, which if you really wanted to, you could then put it into SIF. If you don't know what PSF and SF, SIF are, go back and rethink and review. So let's take this one for example. Our first step is going to be to plot our points, right? Draw a scatter plot. I'm going to count by ones. Now remember, sometimes you might not have to label the data because that information is not given to us. Since I count by ones and I get to 10, we need to make sure that we cover all of our Y axis numbers. And since our table goes up to 47, I'm gonna count by fives. This way I know all of the information will be included. So I got plot one comma 15. 2 comma 28 and that's about there right it it doesn't have to be exactly where it would be but you want to estimate it unless you drew a graph and it was all counting one by one right then yes of course plot it exactly where it needs to be but in this case some of them you kind of need to approximate it a little bit so now once i have these all plotted I can actually see, you know what, this has a positive correlation. So we should be able to draw a line of best fit, right? We know that it is a positive correlation because we can see it. Since it's positive, we can draw that line of best fit, as I mentioned before. So let's take a look at this. What two points do you think we can use to draw our line, right? So if you, as you look through this ruler, you can see well, if I were to connect this first point and this, if I were to connect this point and this point, well, I would have one, two, three, four below, right? Sometimes a good rule to follow is try just connecting the first point with the last point. So if I have my first point and my last point, they're circled here. So let me try and see what kind of information or what kind of line I would get because in this way I can see if I have enough points above as I do below. Draw my line. Okay, so if I look at these, draw my arrows because, you know, you need to make sure you have them. I have three points above the line and two points below. Okay, that's pretty much close as I can get it. That means I now used point one, which is one comma 15, and then point two is seven comma 47. Now, no, I didn't look at the graph and say, oh yeah, that's about 47. I look back at my table, one comma 15 and seven comma 47. Now, it's not always going to be that first and last on the table. Sometimes the table might be out of order. So make sure you check it on the graph that that's the ones that you're using. So now we need to find our line of fit. 
And the way we find our line of fit is by using these two points. So the hardest part for most people is going to be, well, what two points do I use? As a little rule, use the first and the last one. It'll usually give you a good estimate as to where to start and how to draw your line. So if I take these two points and I find my slope, so I get 47 minus 15 over 7 minus 1. This is going to give me 32 over 6, which can still be simplified. If I divide that by 2, I'm going to get 16 over 3. I can't simplify that any further. So now I have my slope. Well, since I have two points and I have slope, I can write my point, my point slope formula, right? I can use that. So I get y minus 15, as you notice, I'm using the point 1, equals 16 over 3 x minus 1. I can keep this in PSF. It doesn't tell me what equation or which format it wants it in. I could also change it to slope intercept form, but you know what? Let's keep it in PSF. That's fine. Now the last step, it's saying use your equation to determine the value of y when x is 13. So I literally use my equation that I have. All right, let's do this up here. I want to find y when x is 13. So I'm substituting 13 in for my x. This is just to say, hey, well, you know, if you were to graph 13 comma something on the graph, where would it be? So you want to start to calculate it. You get 16 divided by 3, multiplied by 12. You want to keep on solving it. Then we get y minus 15 equals, oh, they can simplify 1 and 4. And then I add 15 to both sides, and I get y equals 79. So for a point like this, it would be 13 comma 79. But since it's just asking for what y is, in this case, it's 79. Now, if you didn't use the first and the second, the first and the last point like me, your equation might look different. Your answer for letter D might be different, and that's okay, right? Your answers might be a little bit different. It all actually depends on what points you use, which is why if we use that rule of try and look at the first point and the last point as kind of a little bit of, of a rule to follow, it can help you get as close as possible to the answer that we're looking for. Another thing to pay attention to is look at this line. It closely describes the, the rule, right? These points all are surrounded by it are close to the line. If I had points over here, this line really wouldn't do anything because it doesn't describe the other pieces of data. So you want to be careful and make sure you pick two points that are actually going to create a line that closely represents the data.